Hi everyone and welcome to the weekly update with me, Richard Perry, market analyst at Handtech Markets. Each week I take through the key events I believe will be driving your investments in the coming days. Now, moving into this week, we've had a lot of movement on the forex market, certainly with regard to the yen. The yen strengthening has been a big story. And now there's speculation as to whether the BOJ will intervene in this market. Now, there has been chatter uh, in the last few days as to whether that's going to happen. And now we've had sort of comments from BOJ Governor Karuda, who's saying that basically the BOJ are monitoring um, financial markets and the effect that it's going to have on the economy and prices. So that would suggest that they are thinking about it, but as to whether they can actually do it remains to be seen because Shinzo Abe had comments last week that suggested that um, they were against, or the, or the government at least, were against it. So it'd be interesting to see what actually happens now. Around about uh, 107.50 odd is where we've seen a bit of support coming in. Uh, rallied back above 108, but uh, it'd be interesting to see if that really does much um, in terms of a, a real sort of recovery. But at the moment, it still seems to be that the yen is under pressure. Um, sorry, the yen is strengthening and the dollar yen is under pressure. And we've got China this week, which has a whole raft of economic data coming out. And uh, we've had the inflation data this morning. On Wednesday, we've got the trade data. And then on Friday, we've got GDP, industrial production, and retail sales all coming out. And they are big risk, volatile um, data points that can have a big impact on the market. So uh, that will be something that the market will certainly be looking out for. The other big risk factor this week, certainly coming at the end of this week, will be the expectation or um, anticipation, I should say, of the Doha meeting of OPEC and non-OPEC countries and uh, looking out for whether they're going to have a production freeze or not. That happens on Sunday, the 17th of April. And certainly that's another factor that the markets will be looking out for this week. But certainly, obviously, we'll get the results of that and the fallout from that meeting next week impacting on the markets. It's so into Forex markets. Well, what are we looking out for? Well, we've had a fairly stable euro uh, on the uh, euro dollar front anyway, um, coming up against resistance at uh, 114.65. That's the big long term resistance. And that sort of stabilized the price as to whether we get a bit of profit taking remains to be seen. We're seeing a bit of consolidation. No real sign either way of a breakout yet. But uh, we could see a bit of consolidation. Now, the key factor um, in uh, sterling is obviously Brexit. And um, that has sort of maintained a bit of pressure, a bit of downside pressure on sterling, on, on all the sterling charts, to be honest. Um, but cable obviously pulling back down towards the 140.50 level. That's the key support that we need to look out for near, near to medium term. If we lose that support, then you could be looking back down at the lows again at the February level. 138.35. But on Monday, we've had a bit of a rally, and that seems to be a bit of a short squeeze because there's nothing really behind the move. And I think it'll be interesting to see if that rally can continue. I'm thinking that it's going to be a rally that gets sold into. The dolly end chart obviously is a big mover, and uh, as I said, there's a bit of support that's come in, a bit of buying um, back at around about 108 figures, but there's a big resistance between sort of 109 and 110, sorry, and 109 and 110. I think still we're looking out for sort of rallies to be sold into and any sort of uh, selling opportunity you get, it looks like it could be a good one. So uh, what are we looking out for in the equity markets? Well, it is earnings season coming up for the States and uh, it's not expected to be a pretty um, nice uh, situation there in the States. We're looking out for sort of slide in earnings growth. 9% is the expectation I think that the market is looking out for. And uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be a pretty one either. So we're looking out for the return of some sort of earnings growth and some sort of revenue growth is what the market needs to really push on. But I think in the light, in the light of the fact that Q1 um, doesn't look all that sharp for um, the US uh, GDP growth, uh, it doesn't look likely that we're going to see too much in the uh, in the realms of revenue growth or earnings growth either for the uh, S&P 500. So we've got um, also the factor that the uh, markets have been looking out for is the oil price. The oil price has been a big driver of markets recently, um, slightly less so than it had been previously, but still I think is a key factor so that Doha meeting will drive economic sentiment um, through the uh, equity markets. The DAX has been sort of coming off a little bit recently. FTSE has been struggling. And there's also been signs of a small correction potentially coming through on the S&P 500. Watch out for 2022 as the supports on the S&P 500. 
and the commodity markets. Well, we've had gold price, which has started to recover a bit, actually. The, uh, the Fed coming out with the dovish meeting minutes last week um, still maintains the sort of buying support, that little floor underneath gold, because uh, sort of negative real interest rates is positive for gold, and that sort of underpins the gold price. We've seen a slight increase in the gold price since then, and it's pushing high, it's pushed above the um, the uh, near-term resistance, and it's looking out for possibly a move back towards the 1200 area. Um, what? So, sorry, the, sorry, the 1300 area, which um, it, that would be the sort of long-term big resistance in place on gold, and the oil price. As I said, Doha, big fo big focus on that. Any sort of chatter around the oil price in the Doha meeting will sort of drive the volatility this week, and that's likely to be throughout the week. And uh, at the moment, we've seen a move up towards the resistance levels again. But will it be as a breakout? I think it depends on the results of this Doha meeting. So what about the economic data that we've got to look forward to this week? Well, we've got, um, as I said, all this Chinese data coming out. And I think that will be the main focus on them for the risk volatility aspect. And then you're also looking out for a few US data points as well. You've got retail sales, which is interesting. You've got a 0.2% um, increase on the uh, expectation there for adjusted retail sales. That's actually going to start to see a bit of a trend rolling over there on the year-on-year -year data. Interesting that we've got also the US inflation data as well this week. The expectation is for the core data to remain around about 2.3% on the CPI. So no real expectation of any change there. A couple of central bank meetings this week. We've got the Bank of Canada and the Bank of England, neither of which are expected to move on rates. But uh, we finish on Friday with all that Chinese data, and uh, it could be a volatile end of the week, certainly with Doha coming up on Sunday. So I wish you good luck with all your trading this week, and I will speak to you again next time. Thank you very much.